At the end of our last video, we began setting up our simulation study. Now in this video, we're going to apply fixtures to the part, which are the locations where the part is perfectly rigid or fixed, being restricted from rotating or shifting in any direction. The forces applied to our part will travel through the part and end up supported at these fixture locations. Following the wizard, we can select Add Fixture to begin adding our first fixture. Once we've selected Add Fixture, we have a Fixture Property Manager. To begin adding fixtures, we need to select the faces that we want to be rigid. Let's start by selecting the conical face for the countersink and the cylindrical bore for that same hole. We're going to continue on and select the countersink and hole for each of the other two holes. The three countersink holes represent the bolts holding the hanger onto the wall. With the three holes selected, we can select OK. Now we also want to make the back of the bracket a fixture to simulate how the bracket is tightly bound to the wall, restricting the backplate from deforming into the wall and through friction, stopping the backplate from sliding down the wall. Now we could have just selected the back face while we are still in that first fixture. But to show that you can have multiple fixtures, we're going to select Add Fixture again. Now we can select the back face and select OK. So on the feature tree for our Simulation Express study, we have fixtures and within fixtures, there's two fixtures listed. Both locations that are going to fix the geometry for the purpose of the study. If for any reason we needed to change either one of these fixtures, we could right click it and select Edit Definition or select Edit an Existing Feature on the wizard. Now with the fixture added, we're going to select Next to move on to assigning the loads. We can add either a static load for a linear force or a pressure to be uniformly delivered over the chosen surfaces of our part. To keep things simple, Simulation Express doesn't account for load changes due to gravity or the weight of the part, thermal expansion, or movement of the part. Also with Simulation Express, the load we're adding is a static load. So we're simulating setting the anvil onto the shelf. We're not simulating dropping the anvil on the shelf or hammering on the anvil when it's on the shelf. We're just going to be testing it with the static weight of the anvil sitting on the shelf. Now, because it is a static load, we're going to select Add Force to apply a force. And then we're going to select the top face of the bracket to indicate that's the face the force is going to act on. In the Property Manager, we can see in the Faces for Forces that the one face is selected. The purple arrows indicate the direction of the force. If the force is going in the wrong direction, we can use reverse direction to change the direction of the force. Of course, we do want the force going down, so we don't need reverse direction selected. And we're ready to insert the force value. There are many different engineering calculations to determine loads. But determining the force another object exerts due to weight is very simple. In this case, we have an anvil that weighs 168 kilograms. In the metric system, you're required to convert the mass to a force using the formula force in newtons equals mass in kilograms times acceleration in meters per second. In this case, that would mean force equals 168 kilograms divided by two because that load is distributed over two brackets all times acceleration. The acceleration of our mass is due to gravity, so we'll use 9.81 meters per second. This calculates out to a final force value of 824 newtons. As a quick side note, the American system using pounds already is a force. Interestingly, the mass equivalent is slugs. 
So with our force value of 824 newtons calculated, let's go back and insert that into our simulation study. In the simulation study, I'll enter 824 newtons, and I can select OK to apply the load. Now at this point, with our load applied, we can click Next to move on to assigning the material. We're going to look at assigning the material in the next video, so leave SolidWorks open and move on to the next video.